Hello folks, welcome to the Operating Systems course. In this chapter, I will cover the general concepts in this course and also explain what's expected of you. We will not cover any technical content in this chapter. So, first things first, who is who in this course? After spending about three years in the department, you probably already know who I am, but for the newcomers, my name is Tuna Tuju. You can find my contact information on the slide. The best way of communications in the course will be through emails. However, I would appreciate if you would use the prefix CMP322 in the subject line of all messages for correspondence, since I receive about 300 uh, messages daily sometimes. The name of our assistant in the course is Selam Parlar. Both of us will be available online uh, throughout the semester. So, what are the objectives of this course? We will learn the basic concepts of an operating system. We will be discussing multi-programming and time sharing, scheduling threads and concurrency, critical sections and deadlocks, virtual memory, paging and swapping, and if time permits, storage management. So at the end of the course, you will be able to understand the interaction between the hardware, the operating system, and the application software running on that hardware and operating system. Together with the other course, CMP344, this course is the first place where you understand how a computer system works in general, how the topics you have learned in the previous courses, basically CMP150, 160, 250, 230, and 260, together with some other courses, relate to each other. So the courses you have learned up to now contained basic concepts, so in each course you learned those concepts. But as I said, through the operating systems course, this course, and also computer organization course, which is CMP344, you will see that these pieces of the puzzle are now fitting to each other. So it will make better sense what you have learned in programming fits together well with object-oriented programming in 160 and data structures and all other courses. So this is really a semester where you will have a better understanding of everything in computer engineering. So uh, this will also uh, allow you to understand the difference between a programmer and a computer engineer. So in other words, it means you will be able to make better designs because now you know how the hardware works and also how the operating system on top of that hardware works and how your application programs, the programs you're writing, are getting service from the hardware through the operating system, understand what the bottlenecks will be and design your programs accordingly so you have much better performance. You will even uh, be able to write better programs uh, once you have learned uh, operating systems and uh, computer organization concepts. The textbook uh, in this course is uh, by Silbershatz, Galvin and Geck. Uh, the course requires uh, a lot of reading. Uh, you will not have too much mathematics in this course, but uh, you're uh, strongly recommended to get a copy of the textbook even the uh, eighth edition is good enough. And uh, both in the exams and in the discussions we will have throughout the course, you should expect questions uh, that are related to reading assignments. But note that both in the discussions and in the exams, I will not ask you only questions about what we have covered in this course, but you will realize that I often ask questions which requires you to merge the information you have learned all in all other courses together. So you will not get questions about only operating systems, but you will realize that I'm just asking you to merge the information uh, from all other courses. About the grading, well, starting from this semester, we are doing a significant change in the way we are teaching this course and also this will significantly affect your grading. As of this semester, we will be employing what's called flipped classroom. 
This implies that you should not expect the professor, me, to convey the whole information to you during the lectures. Instead, you will have to uh, work by yourself and discuss with your friends. So, in a reverse, also make use of what's called peer learning. So, uh, I will be preparing videos of these lectures uh, sev uh, several days before the uh, lecture, and you will be expected to watch all those videos before you come to class. And uh, during the class, uh, you should be uh, discussing with your friends to find the uh, solutions to the questions I will ask. I will go over this in uh, more detail. But note that flipped classroom requires that the student comes to the lecture in a prepared manner. Uh, so attendance becomes quite important because you will have a lot of discussions during the lecture and this will significantly affect your grade. Almost one third of your uh, final score will be determined by your uh, attendance and active cooperation during the lecture. And uh, as I'm going to explain, you will have some discussion teams in which you will have to uh, perform teamwork, uh, not as projects, but uh, uh, as this discussion teams. So, uh, as I said, I will prepare lecture videos. This is one of uh, those example videos. And you are supposed to uh, watch these videos before the lecture. I will not repeat the whole content of the videos during that one hour lecture, which is for this semester on Wednesdays. I will just uh, touch the highlights of the chapter rather than going over everything. So make sure that you have already watched the videos. If you have not watched the videos before coming to class, you will not understand anything from those highlights and you will not be able to cope up with the course. Uh, in the other session of the uh, course, in the two hour lecture, which is on Thursdays this semester, uh, I will post some questions on the screen, only the question, and give you some time, typically a couple of minutes, to find the answer but you will not find the answer by yourself. You will be discussing with your friends in your team, not the whole classroom, and try to find the solution altogether. That's where peer learning comes into play. You will uh, do all these discussions, not through Zoom, uh, because if you tr start discussing here in Zoom, then everyone will hear you. You have to discuss only with your teammates. Therefore, you can use any other collaboration uh, tool. Uh, you're free with that. But what I expect is at the end of that discussion, uh, discussion uh, period for the team, I will pick a random team and a random member of the team to answer the question. Well, it is possible that you discuss and find the answer to the question, but unfortunately, I don't pick your group, so you may not be uh, able to make use of that answer. That's possible. Also, even if I pick your uh, group, I will not ask someone, a, a team spokesperson, to explain the answer. I will be picking the student who's supposed to answer. Therefore, during that couple, uh, those couple of minutes while you're having discussions, make sure that everyone in the team understands the solution. It's not sufficient for one student to know the answer because it's likely that I would have picked some other student. And uh, depending on the answer of that student, everyone in that team gets the same score. So it's important, once again, it's very important that 
everyone in the team understands the solution. It's not the solution of a single member of the team, but it should be the solution of all members. So the team discussions become very important. And this will also leave no room for free riders. That means it will not be possible like uh, a lazy student couples with uh, some uh, hardworking student in the team. And since the hardworking student is finding all the answers, that lazy student is just able to get good scores because of that hardworking student. Uh, so you all have to join in the process. The teams will be created by me. So you will have to resolve all possible problems and conflicts within the team by yourself. This is part of the process. I will not let you pick your team members. So you will have to live with whoever becomes your uh, team friends. And the groups will be fixed throughout the semester. Uh, so you cannot say, well, last week we had problems uh, within the team. So this week we want to change uh, our teams. That will not be possible. So make good friendship within the teams, in other words. And also, everyone who comes to that specific two hour lecture, if you're there in the uh, during the lecture, you will all get one point by default. So even if I don't pick your team or if I uh, don't ask you any questions, you will still get one point just for your attendance. And if you don't show up, then you will get zero points. Now, if you don't show up and I pick your team, and your teammates do well, let's say they get 10 points, over 10 points, so they get full points. Everyone in the team will get 10 points, except the ones who do not show up. They will get zero points. So attendance is mandatory, in other words. How about the percentages of these? Well, participation, this, what we discussed in the previous two slides, uh, makes up the 30%. As I said, almost one third of your overall score. It's even higher than the midterm and the final, which are 20% each. And you will also have two projects, which will make up together 30 points. So it sums up to 100%. Well, the slide I hate most is about cheating, unfortunately. So as in all my other courses, there will be no mercy for cheaters. If you get caught while cheating, do not come to express your excuses to me. I will not accept any apologies and the rules will be applied directly. If you cheat in an exam, you will just get an F. No excuses. If you cheat in a project, you will get minus 300 points for the first one. That means if you couldn't do the project, just say I didn't do it and you will get zero points. If you cheat, you will get minus 300 uh, points. Remember, we have two projects. So if in the next project you do everything fine and you get 100 points, overall your score would be minus 200. And remember, the projects have 30% weight in your overall score. So you will not be able to pass probably if, you, uh, caught, if you're caught cheating. If you try it for the second time, then you will get minus 700 points for the second one. Remember, we're talking about the second cheating, so together with minus 300, it makes minus 1,000 points from the projects. So it's, it means you have failed, in other words. Take good care of your code. Don't share it. Don't place it somewhere other can, others can reach. Uh, don't put it in open repositories in GitLab or other places. It is completely your responsibility to protect your code. If you're not able to protect your code, you'd better not take this course. The lectures uh, in this semester will be 
is in here and the PSRs are also given. Uh, so this will be end of this chapter. Thank you and see you all in chapter one.